Three new Duval County School Board members will be sworn in this Tuesday, including Daryl Willey. He is replacing current chair Paula Wright, who could not seek re-election because of term limits. She's been there eight years. Uh, Willie has 15 years of experience in the education arena. He and his wife, Erica, have three daughters. Their oldest will start kindergarten next year. Wow, the oldest is starting kindergarten. Woo, <laughs> they must be young. He is going to represent District 4, which includes downtown, the east side, and parts of northwest Jacksonville. You know, in the last eight years, as we just shared with you, the district's graduation rates have steadily increased. Countywide, there's been a jump of more than 16%. In District 4, there's been an increase of about 24%. Daryl Willie joins us now this morning to talk about his vision for the future. Good morning. Thank Good you for morning. being here. My and pleasure. congratulations. Thank you I know so it's probably much. been a whirlwind for it you has. since the election. <laughs> it has. So let's talk a little bit. I mean, we, you you heard and you know because I know Paula Wright made the uh, you know this presentation yeah, showing yeah. all of the improvements. Uh, District four, which is of course what you're taking That's over it. in the last eight years. How do you how do you add to that? And let's start. Let's say uh, specifically with with security. Yeah, I mean, you we have just one thing about me is I have three daughters as you mentioned before so it's about every every parent wants to send their their kid to school their child to school and make sure they come back safe absolutely so that is the ultimate responsibility of our board is to make sure they're safe and then to make sure they're learning so uh, we have a lot of decisions to make uh, you we saw the school safety assistants who are in our schools now that was a mandate that came down from the state that was unfunded so we have to figure out how we fund those things and then what do we do about just making sure not only the physical safety of our schools are there but also we have a lot of mental health things going on so we have some great board members who are coming on i'm excited to work with our two new board members and the four remaining to really increase safety to maintain safety to make sure that, that the environment is right for for students to it's learn. interesting we've seen uh, quite a significant jump because under the previous superintendent who was adamantly opposed to metal detectors as right. the example right. we're now seeing a flip in that and right. of course with the with the increase in in danger that we're seeing yeah. nationally among schools i mean we certainly can understand what the yeah. concern would be. What's your position on the metal detectors and the wands, you know, in the high schools? I know you've got 33 schools in your district. Right, right. And there's some, some things on the board that are coming in front of the board right now around metal detectors. And I think one of the proposals is metal detectors in all of the high schools, right. at least two. And they're mobile when metal there's detectors. Threats. Right. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think what we can't do is take any risk. Um, at the end of the day, like what we don't want to do is look back on a situation and say, we could have had a metal detector, we could have stopped it. So anytime we can do that, and do that across the board, I think we have to make sure if we're doing it in one school, we provide it for the other school. So I'm all about making sure our kids are safe, and I think we have to take a hard look. And if metal detectors are gonna be the thing that can, can thwart or stop something, we got to take advantage of it. Well, it's interesting, too, because saying all of that and knowing the increases that are being made from the governor right. down, right. you know, there's X amount of dollars that are given to right. each district to pay for these things, <laughs> right. and they don't end up paying for it all. So how Precisely. do you wrestle with that with the budget? Because yeah. now you're having to make these decisions. I mean, there are parents, I know my daughter is in the public school system. I just so. would love for her to bring home books, <laughs> you know? And so it is hard to yeah. wrestle. How do you how do you do that? And and because you do have to prioritize. Do. What we, are you thinking? We do. I think one of the good things about these metal detectors and some of the other safety issues, there are some grants that are being put out. So what we'll do as a district is we'll go out and seek out monies to be able to pay for those so it won't come out of our bottom line so that's what's good about the metal detectors but two we have to number one work with our Duval delegation like a lot of the monies that come to Jacksonville Duval County come from the state legislator and we have an amazing state legislator so it's our responsibility as a board to set out an agenda and work with those individuals up there so we can draw down the correct amount of money the second thing is we gotta we gotta collaborate we gotta partner there's so many great companies and businesses and organizations that we can partner with that public private partnership piece is going to be the key for this next wave for what we need in Duval County. And you know, it's interesting. We were just talking yesterday about not only the partnerships, but also the importance of the partnerships among parents. Yes. So that they can get involved also yes. and invest in their child's future when it comes to education and the yeah. support that they need Precisely. to keep getting us hopefully yes. to Duval to County that to a. that A rating. I know. That would be a, Mr. yes. Mr. Willie, thank you for being here. No I do problem. appreciate thank it. You'll so be sworn much. in with the other two on Tuesday. Congratulations yes. again, again to you, you so and your much. family.